Good morning. Um, thank you for joining me this morning. Um, if you have a chance to make it outside today, it is beautiful. Uh, the sun is shining. The, the birds here are chirping. Uh, there's, a, there's a little faint wind that's going that kind of helps cool you off. Uh, it is, it's just gorgeous. Um, so getting back to the lesson, um, we're in Luke 13 still. Uh, we're in, we're going to be doing verses 10 through 17. Uh, we're going to be getting off of, I guess, direct uh, influence on, you know, your view of people. We hit on the first five verses, you know, men must not judge but repent. Uh, and we looked at, you know, the, you know, the Galileans and how, like, the, it says, you know, that they sinned above all. And then we looked at how we're not to let, judge those people. And how we're to, you know, first um, give an account of our own selves, you know, to, to make an inventory of ourselves, our own sin, uh, our own, um, I guess, stand before God. And then the, the last one that we did is we looked at a man that wanted to cut down a fig tree after three years. And then we compared that to how we see people and how we pray for them and work for them and um, how we give them you know chance after chance and we pray for them uh, and then for ourselves uh, that we need to work up the the ground we need to fertilize it you know that, that's we talked about the root system but today is going to be a little bit different we're going to be talking about a woman cured on the sabbath a woman cured on the sabbath uh, now we're going to start in verse 10 um, so in verse 10 it says, And he was teaching in, in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath. So he was teaching on the Sabbath. So that's, that's just something to keep in mind. So, And behold, there was a woman which had a spirit of infirmities 18 years. So this woman had an infirmities, and it says that, that she, behold, well, he saw a woman 18 years of an infirmity. Well, what's the infirmity? Usually in Scripture... It'll say within the the sentence, or before or after. Usually, it'll it'll say what the infirmity of this of a person is. And in this case, if you continue to read, it says, "And was bowed together, and could no wise lift up herself." So she was. I don't know how much she was hunched over, uh, but she could not lift up herself. So I don't know if she was like, like maybe like a hunched back, or that she was completely bent over. Um, it doesn't say, uh, but she was bowed together uh, and could not likewise uh, lift up herself. So she may have been fully leaned over, but she was in the synagogue. I mean, you know, often, <laughs> this, we're going to get off subject a little bit, but usually sometimes a uh, synagogue in that, um, in that era, I guess, was a form of a church. She was hunchback, and she was in the synagogue, or she was bowed over. I don't know what it is it doesn't say, but she was bowed down. So she was in the synagogue. Many people have a cough and miss church. So this woman should <laughs> put you to shame. So she, anyway, she was in the synagogue, and because he was teaching there and saw her. So verse 12. Sorry, I had to put that in there. <laughs> All right, verse 12. And when Jesus saw her, he called her to him and said unto her, Woman, thou art loose from thine infirmity. Now, it's one thing to say that you're loosed from your infirmity. Like, that's just words. A woman, thou art loosed from thy infirmity. That, that's just words right now. But let's see what happened. 13, and he laid his hands on her. And I don't know if you underlined your Bible, but it says here, and immediately she was made straight and glorified God. Now, this Jesus, I don't know if she knew him. It doesn't say. There's no background or anything into this. But she's walking through. She's hunched over. She can't, you know, raise herself up. Um, he calls to her and he says, you know, thou art loosed. Lays hands on her and immediately she is healed. Uh, she can raise herself up. She can walk upright and everything is fine. But the most amazing thing was, is she says, and she glorified God. She glorified God. Now, when you're healed uh, of something, uh, many people can glorify, I guess, the doctor. They can glorify different things. You know, thank you for doing this. But when something amazing happens, when, you know, this miracle happened to her and they you know, laid hands on her and 
was healed of her infirmity, you know, she praised God. And, and that is ultimately what everything that you're healed of any infirmity should do. Uh, now, and I'm not exactly for of the healing nature because I think that um, with a lot of, I'm not saying that all, uh, you know, God can use anybody, but a lot of emphasis and, and people in church will use healing as the means of worship and a means of glorifying God. You know, they'll go around, they'll put hands on each other, and that's the emphasis on healing. Um, the, the main uh, occasion was as he was teaching in the synagogue, he came ultimately for the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Now, the greatest commission, it doesn't say go out in all the world's uh, and to heal everybody. It says, you know, to proclaim the word of God, you know, to baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. So the main emphasis is on scripture, the word of God, uh, but most people put emphasis on healing. Um, so you have to watch churches like that. Uh, so moving away from that, let's see what they have to say in verse 14. And the ruler of the synagogue answered with indignation because that Jesus, so <laughs> that's kind of bad, that Jesus, you know, if you ever <laughs> did something bad, you know, you know, that, you know, whatever, put your name in it. Uh, so that Jesus had healed on the Sabbath day and said unto the people, there are six days in which, and was six days in which men ought to work in them. Therefore, come and be healed and not on the Sabbath day. So <laughs> this woman, 18 years, 18 years. And uh, it was on the Sabbath day. So come back tomorrow. Uh, <laughs> come back. Yeah, well, I can't heal you on the Sabbath day, but I can heal you like tomorrow. Like we can fit you in around four. <laughs> I don't know. But uh, that, that's what he's saying. He's like, you know, you could have healed her on any day except for the Sabbath day. So then the Lord answered him and said, and this is what he did. He didn't, you know, he didn't take back any punches or, you know, he didn't like, you know, kid gloves him. He didn't like smack him a little bit. Like he said, what? Watch what he said. Thou hypocrite. <laughs> he, he didn't uh, pack any punches. He just he just kind of walloped him right there. Does not each one of you on the so he's like, you know. So it says each one of you. Um. And so I guess there's different people there that. It's mocking him, but it says, Each one of you on the Sabbath loose his ox or his ass um, from the stall and lead him away to watering. So don't you water your, your animals, your, you know, your ass and your, and your ox. Um, and I guess the answer to that would have to be yes. I mean, you're not going to leave them in the stall. Um, so, and, uh, and then in verse 16, it says, And ought not this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, Ooh, so that, that had heart. So Abraham, they held to the Abrahamic covenant, which was like the Ten Commandments and different things. Uh, so they're, you know, they, they thought Abraham was like the, you know, the ultimate. You know, he, the Abraham was everything to him. Uh, so this is the daughter of Abraham. So this, this kind of hit them, you know, got their attention a little bit. And uh, whom Satan... Um, so this is who bowed down this woman. Now, it doesn't give a lot of insight into infirmities of people that he healed. But in this occasion, it says, you know, who ultimately bound this woman? And we find that in verse 16. It says, Satan hath bound. So that's a little bit of insight. Satan bound this woman. And he knew that Satan had bound to this woman. So, and it says, and lo, these 18 years be loose from this bound on the Sabbath day. So he gave an insight and he says, look, I know he didn't follow her around for 18 years. He didn't like, you know, go and talk to the, you know, the parents of this woman. He didn't, he didn't try to find out, you know, well, how long has this woman been, you know, bowed down? He, he knew that it was 18 years. He just saw her in the synagogue walking by and oh, behold, there's a woman. He knew that it was Satan that did it, knew that it was the daughter of Abraham uh, descendants, you know, uh, the daughter of Abraham. And he knew that Satan had done this to her. And he gives insight into all of these things, and let's see what how the reaction they'd get. Now, before they were like, you know, they were all mad at him in verse 14. Uh, but they were mad at him. Now, let's see what happens. 
verse 16, or verse 17. And when he had said these things, all the adversaries were ashamed. <laughs> they were like, yeah, we do work. We, we you know, water our ass and our oxen. And uh, if she was bowed down for 18 years and, you know, Satan did it and she's a daughter of Abraham. And we, we, if we would have known all that before, we wouldn't have said anything. <laughs> That's what they were saying. So, and we're ashamed and all the people rejoice for all the glorious things that were done by him. So after he said these things, I guess he pointed out more of an insight of why he did it. He said, you know, Satan bound this woman. Though she's a daughter of Abraham, you do work too. Like I know every one of you take your ass and your oxen to water. And now you're saying that I can't, I can come in here and teach. That wasn't a problem. Me teaching had nothing to do. I was there, I was freely teaching. You know, we learned that from verse 10, uh, that he was teaching, it was just fine. But healing, mm. and he And he made, and he put them to shame. And he says, you know, this woman glorified God right after that. So they blessed him, and then they do all this other stuff. So sometimes you have to combat people. Um, you have to, sometimes you have to say, you know, why you're doing this, this thing. And, and as far as the Sabbath, um, if you're still watching, um, comment below or email or something. Let me know if you want me to do a lesson on the Sabbath. Uh, there's a lot of things on the Sabbath, and I think that people overuse the word Sabbath. Um, there's some key things in, in Scripture that it says to do on the Sabbath, some things that not to do. There's one direct thing that it says to do uh, for the Sabbath. Uh, so if you want me to do a lesson on the Sabbath, just comment below and just let me know. Um, but I hope this, this blesses you um, today. And my, my wish, uh, my prayer for you would be um, that you would have a better understanding of who Jesus was. And I hope you learn more about how this woman was infirm, you know, had infirmity. It was because of Satan. And... Just comment below if you want me to do a little bit less on the Sabbath. Um, but Jesus stood up for himself. Uh, Jesus corrected people. Uh, and these were rulers in the synagogue, and he didn't care. And he directed them, and he said, you know, y'all do work. Uh, so we need to stand up for what is right. Um, and if we are healed, we need to, to give God the praise and glory, and not necessarily men. So thank you for watching. God bless you, and I hope you have a good day.